is just a bowl of cherries don't take it serious life's too mysterious hello my lovelies my name is valerie pettyford and welcome to the q a the fossey q a um, you guys were asked to send in questions and you sent the most delicious questions. Thank you so much. So I got my index cards. Let's get started. Okay. So Madeline Mayashitas, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Mayashitas. She asked, if we don't live in New York City, what's the best way to help preserve, learn from the Burton Fosse legacy? That is a very great question and a very difficult question. I mean, how do we, how do you keep it alive when we're not there? You know, when we're not there to teach you. And so my first thought is, we're coming to you. Let us know where you are. We will be there in a heartbeat to teach you the choreography. That's the best way to learn is from us, the legacy to teach you. Um, cause it's hard to do it yourself because there are things, little intricacies and stuff like that, that you miss along the way. You know what I mean? When you're not taught by one of the reconstructors, that's one, but two, this is the best way to at least start, to at least prepare. I think you should start learning dances from the past. Think about it. Bob was born, you know, during a time where, you know, uh, uh, they were doing, you know, the trucking and there were just certain dances back then, uh, uh, choreography back then, choreographers back then. And that's those styles of uh, dance aren't taught that much today. And so why not go back to where he began, learn those dances? Um, and also those cultures, flamenco, Afro-Cuban, uh, gram technique, all those different types of stuff back then, burlesque, uh, vaudeville. Those are the things that he grew up in, uh, on and use in his choreography because that is part of him. And so I think if you start learning that along with keeping up your ballet technique, tap, jazz of today, even hip hop and uh, the dances of today, that will give you a head start on learning Fosse. That will give you a head start on learning Fosse. You'll be ahead of the game. So go back to the past to now be in the present. And then I swear, we'll come to you. Please just tell the Vernon Fosse where, legacy where you are and we'll get a, we'll get a teacher out, uh, out there, especially after all this hot mess is over with. Okay, hopefully I ans answered your question, Madeline. Thank you so much. Out of all the routines you know, which Fosse routine is your absolutely favorite? Ah, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Okay. Uh, out of the ones that I know, I swear to you, it's something about the Frug. I don't know what it is. And this is from Sweet Charity, the Frug. Um, I was not, I was unfortunately not uh, uh, able to do um, Sweet Charity because I was doing something else. So I never got a chance to do that show. So I never got a chance to do that number, but I at least get a chance to teach it. And it's something about that. That number is one of my favorite, all time favorite Fosse numbers. For me personally, uh, uh, you know, the uh, number that I've actually done that is my favorite, I would have to say Dance and Dance in the Shadows from uh, Big Deal. Um, his last show the year before he passed. And I was honored that he got a, he choreographed it on myself, Barbara Yeager and Gary Chapman. And uh, that was an amazing trio. And uh, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Let's see, our next question is from, let's see if I can pronounce it, all these incredible names. Ana Cuadros, Ana Cuadros, okay. Uh, the question is, what is the most important advice Val would give a dancer performing one of Fosse's choreographies? Ah, great question. I say the most important advice would be to make sure that you're not only dancing it brilliantly, but you're also acting it brilliantly. Whatever Bob's vision is for that particular number, 
You have to combine, you have to marry the two. Strong dance, strong intent. And then if you happen to be also singing, sing as well. So all three are connected. And so that is my best advice to really, really um, fulfill his vision is to have all those components working brilliantly at high peak level all together. Okay. Next question is from Natasha Truitt. Uh, her question is, Valerie, what was your most memorable experience slash performance working with Mr. Fossey? And then her second part of the question was, what technique techniques did you study, train in to enhance your skill as a Fosse dancer? So your first question first, uh, what is my most memorable experience performance working with Fosse? Oh my God, I have so many, so many. Oh my God, it was just a revelation. I guess the most memorable would be being part of his skeleton crew. Now the skeleton crew uh, is a group of dancers Bob would hire to help him realize the choreography for that show he's about to work on. So in this case, it was five of us and I was lucky enough to be one of that five and we helped create the numbers for the show Big Deal. That was, um, once again, uh, a new musical that he choreographed and directed the year before he passed. And to be a part of that skeleton crew, to work with him in that capacity, you're my idol, my mentor, it was, it was truly the most memorable, memorable moment of my entire life. Um, I was so lucky. And just to watch him work in that capacity, bar none, my favorite. Uh, and then part two of the question, with a reminder, what techniques did you study, train to enhance your skill as a Fosse dancer? Ballet, 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 ballet. Technique, strong technique. Even though everybody thinks, you know, and it is true, you know, the hunched over, the turned in feet, all that stuff. To be able to do that, to be able to pull that off brilliantly, you have to have strong technique. You have to know your body. You have to know your core. And the best way to do that, the best way is ballet technique. And then I also, I came with, you know, uh, when I... Uh, work with Fosse with knowledge of Afro-Cuban and flamenco and all kinds of and mo uh, uh, modern dance and the Horton technique and all that kind of stuff. I was very lucky. So that all helped me as well. But there's nothing like ballet technique. That, that's one of the strongest skills um, that enhances you as a Fosse dancer. Thank you, Natasha. My next question is from Mr. Clancy, 99. He asks, did you do a Broadway? Did you do Broadway and the national tour of dancing? Uh, he says, I saw the national tour of dancing back in 1980 in Washington, D.C. And then he has another part to his question. And were there any differences working with Bob Fosse later on in Big Deal? So to answer your first question, uh, no, my darling, I did not do Broadway, but I did do the very first national tour of dancing. Oh my God, it was everything. Oh my God, the, because we had, it was such an incredible cast because we had these you know, new folks, but we also had some of the original cast members from the Broadway cast that came along with us. Uh, let me just name them. Sandal Bergman, Vicki Frederick, Charles Ward, just to name a few. Um, and then we had the great Catherine Dovey, Gwen Verdon, and Chris Chapman, help put us in the show. You know, when Bob was out doing other things, they were the ones that helped put us and, and, and teach us all the numbers and give us all the different parts. And then Bob would come in and make sure everything was on point. It was, it, it was my first time working with the master and it changed my life. It changed my life. And I just was so blessed to be in that cast. It was everything everything. And then the second part, and yes, I was in DC. And then the second part of that question is, were there any differences working with Bob later on in life and later on in big deal? So that was, I ended, you know, I worked with Bob in 79, 80, and then I did big deal in 86. 
so six years later. Um, no, there were no really differences in respect of how he approached his work. What was different was, is I got a chance to see him create his work. You know, going into a show, it was already set on incredible dancers that came before me, the, the show Dancing. Um, and so I was stepping in someone else's shoes, doing it my way, because Bob allowed you to bring your own stuff to things that already existed. But with Big Deal, I got a chance to watch him create and go through the painstaking trials and tribulations and the ups and downs of creating a brand new show with these incredible human beings. So um, that was the only difference. Um, he, uh, he, was, he was amazing to, to, to work for. And uh, yeah, I miss him, I miss him. Ah. So hopefully that answers your question, Mr. Clancy99. Our next question is from Angela Panta. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Angela Panta. And she wrote in Spanish. She's from Peru. She says, greetings from Peru. And we did a little, thank God for Google uh, translation. Oh, I love you. I love you, Google translation. And basically uh, she asked is, um, how did you get to start dancing? How, how did you start dancing? Guess what my beginnings. And I say to her, and hopefully I'm going to try to say this in Spanish. Nací para bailar. I was born to dance. Hopefully I said it right. Um, my parents said, you know, by the age of two, they knew that I was going to be a dancer. Basically, I even came out dancing. I just knew. They just knew I was going to be a dancer. And I, I knew. Um, it just, there was something about dancing. And then when I first saw my first, I guess, on television, a musical, I, my first musical, and I know it was Sitcherise in the bandwagon, because that's still one of my favorite musicals of all time on the movie screen. Um, when I saw that, I knew that's what I was going to do. And so that's how I started dancing. And then my incredible dad went out and bought me point shoes. Oh my God, I didn't even know that. But even before I even started dancing school, my dad bought me a pair of point shoes and I would be around, didn't know what I was doing. And then he put me in dancing school and it was Gloria Jackson's dancing school in Queens. That was my first dancing school. And then I transferred to the great Bernice Johnson dancing school two years later. And I learned so much from both of them. They were amazing teachers and such. And then I went to performing arts high school and, and it was a ballet major because originally I was going to be a ballet dancer. And then I saw my first Broadway musical, which was The Wiz. And I was like, okay, change my profession and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's how I started dancing. Nasi para bailar. I was born to dance. Hopefully I answer your question, my darling. And hopefully I pronounce your name right. Um, Anjala Panta from Peru. Hopefully we can get out there. Our next question is from Eva uh, Victoria. Eva Victoria. And she asks, what's a piece of advice to an aspiring artist? What's a piece of advice to an aspiring artist? I say to any artist, whether it's a dancer, singer, actor, whatever, please learn your craft. Learn all about it. It just makes you a well-rounded performer and human being. And that's what you want to bring to whatever you do, especially in the arts, humanity. And the only way you're going to learn that is to learn your craft, learn from others, be open, be receptive, be uh, giving, uh, be nice, be professional. Uh, so that is my best advice is uh, learn your craft, learn what you're doing and, and, and be humble and Treat everybody with respect, yeah? Oh, Eva asked me another question. Hello, Miss Eva, thank you. She asked, um, what's a secret behind Fosse's intricate and precise movement? What's the secret? <laughs> practice, 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 practice. <laughs> That truly is a secret. That truly is a secret of his, his work. Oh my God. You can, I mean, I've been doing his work for 30 years and I feel like I'm just getting it. You know what I mean? Um, you have to be patient with yourself. It's a lot of things working. It, you know what I mean? And so you just have to practice. You just 
have to practice and you have to use your entire being to do it, to, to, to savor it, to execute it. Yeah, hopefully I answer your question. Thank you, Eva. Thank you for two questions. My next question is from Cameron Reed. One. So Cameron, uh, he asks, what was your favorite Fosse show to be in? That's hard. That's hard. Um, I've only done two uh, shows of Bob's. Um, and they were my favorite for, well, actually three, because um, the, the show Fosse which was later, which was a retrospect and like, you know, a retrospect of Bob's choreography. So it's so three shows. Um, I would have to say uh, my favorite. Oh, that's so hard. <laughs> okay, let's put it this way. My favorite show has to be my first show, which was dancing. There was nothing like it. It was nothing like your first time. And then, but Big Deal was my favorite for different reasons. It was because of not only what I had to do in the show, uh, being part of an incredible trio, and then Bob had me sing and act and do skits and all kinds of things, and I was his dance captain, and I helped give auditions and be part of the skeleton crew. So that was my favorite for those reasons, right? And then now jump to 1998, 99 season, you know, Fosse, and that was like my thank you to Bob. So, yeah, that's a hard one. <laughs> Oh, that kind of answered your question. Cameron, under, underscore, read one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, next question is from Katie Plummer. She asks, what makes someone such a good Fosse style dancer? Someone that has it all. Someone who has strong technique, strong dancing ability, strong acting ability, uh, who's just so well-rounded and could execute what Bob's vision is for that particular number. It changed. It varied from number to number, from show to show. And so what made a good style Fosse dancer, who is the one that could be able to go from one number to the other, other show to another show, and give Bob exactly what he wanted. That's I think the you know a great Fosse dancer, yeah, well rounded, all that. All right, uh, we have two more questions. Two more questions. This one is from Jazzin sixty six, and Jazzin asks, "Do you have a dream role? Do I, Valerie Petty, have a dream role? Well, uh, yeah, I do. My first, and I have two. My first one is I would love one time in my life to play Mama Rose in Gypsy. I would love to do that one time in my life. And then I would love to play Spider Woman slash Aurora in Kiss of the Spider Woman. I'd love to do the Cheetah Rivera role. Love me some Cheetah. Oh my God, got a chance to work with her. She is everything. Uh, uh, uh. So yeah, those are my two favorites. And last but not least, Natalia Godinas. Um, she asks, what was the most important lesson Bob taught you as a dancer? Oh my God. Let's see. That would be less is more. Less is more. When he said those words, um, it was probably uh, during Big Deal, rehearsal with somebody. I'm not quite sure I was, you know, doing my dance captain duties at the time. And he told somebody that I was like, lights went off and bells went off. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, my God. It was like everything came, was like totally into focus. I got it. Less is more. Because one of the great things about Fosse's choreography uh, is it... it is and the hard thing about Fosse's choreography is twofold. It's hard to do, but when you see it done right, it looks so easy. And so when you do it with ease, when you do, when it looks like it's done with ease, then you know you're doing it right. Um, to see the greats do it, Gwen Burden, Bar None, the best, 
and ranking Cheetah Rivera. Oh my God. Oh my God. Any, yeah, just pick, just pick them, just pick them. Um, yeah, when you see the, the, the greats do that. Um, yeah, and that's what it is. Simple is best. Simple is best. So that's um, what the best lesson he taught me. Uh, I, hopefully um, you guys enjoyed this Q&A section of Fosse. Um, thank you so much. And hopefully we'll get a chance to do it again. You guys rock. Thank you so much for caring and are interested. And guys, please stay safe and take care of each other and take care of yourself. Bye. Live and laugh.